Now let's talk about one of the most used and famous Angular hook that is ng on init. Whenever you create a new component in the Angular application, by default you will see that the component has this ng on init method. This is also an Angular hook. This method will get called once the Angular will initialize all the input properties but before displaying them on the UI. It means after initializing these properties but before displaying them on the UI that is the view. In the middle of this process, this ng on init will get called and this method will get called only once in the entire component lifecycle. Most of the developers get confused in between this constructor and the ng on init method. They might have a confusion where they need to declare the default values for this particular component. We will come to that part later but before that let's understand what will happen if you are using this constructor and ng on init both of them in a component which one will get called first so here i am in this child component that is the authors component and i am using this authors component in this home component this is basically a parent component for us and here in the html file we are using this now here just for the testing purpose i want to add one console and here i am writing hello from child ng on init cool let's just copy it and paste it in the constructor as well and here i'm writing constructor using this concept we will get the idea of which one will get called first and remember we are writing this code in the child component let's go to the browser and here we are on the browser and Let's see what we have on the console window. So here you can see we are having this data. Basically these are the input properties and this data is coming from ng on changes. This one. So this is where we are putting this log. We have the data and after that we are having this hello from child ng on init. But on top of everything we are having this hello from child constructor. So there are three things. First of all the constructor will get called. Then the ng changes will get called. And after that, this ng on init will get called. If I'm hitting on this counter button, you will notice we are only getting the data from ng on changes. This constructor and this ng on init is getting called only once in the entire life cycle of the component. But this ng on changes will get called every time there is a change in the input property. No matter how many times you will hit this button or change the input property, this ng on init will get called only once. Let's use the same concept in the parent component also and we just need to verify which one will get called first whether it is parent or the child. So I'm just copying this message from here. Go to the parent component. This is the component that we are using as a parent and here in the constructor I'm just putting this line and let's use the parent. Save the changes. Similarly, just copy this code from this ng on init method also and let's put it over here. Copy this parent, update this message. So what we have now in the parent component, we are having one message in the constructor and one message in this ng on init method. Similarly, we are having these messages in the child component as well. We just need to confirm which one will get called first. Go to the browser and let's see what we have over here. So first we are getting the message from hello from parent constructor. The Angular application will create the instance from parent to child. So first of all, the instance of the parent component will be created. And the first method that will be called is constructor. Then we have hello from child constructor. Remember constructor is something that will get called whenever we will create an instance of a new class. Then we have hello from parent ng on init. Once the constructor is done, it means the initialization is done. Then we are having the message from parent ng on init. Then we are having this message from child ng on changes. And at the last, we are having the message from ng on init. Remember, constructor is first, then we have ng on changes, and then we have ng on init. Now let's talk about the actual use case for the constructor and the ng on init method. Okay, first let's talk about the constructor. If you need to inject any service in your component, then constructor is the best place. Also, for example, you are having a couple of fields in your component like the first name, last name, etc. And because of the latest version of the TypeScript, you have to initialize them either while declaring it 
or in the constructor so constructor is the best place to initialize all the fields that you are having in your component do not perform any kind of operations over here because the logic will depend on so many properties and those properties will get initialized after the constructor for example some of your code depends on the input properties and at the time of constructor those properties will not get initialized those will get initialized after the constructor so do not perform any kind of logic over here in the constructor now let's talk about the ng on init in the ng on init method you can perform any logic that you need to perform at very first as the component gets initialized for example on the page load you need to make a call to your api then ng on init is the best place because at the time of ng on init all your fields and properties will have their value and because this ng on init will get called after the ng on changes so the input properties will also have the data and here in this ng on init method you can perform all your default logic at the end do not get confused in between the constructor and ng on init constructor is just a placeholder for injecting the service and initializing the default fields whatever logic you need to perform in your component at the first when the component will get initialized then perform them in the ng on init method